everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Dreamers Game 1. This is turn 40. Let's jump into things. Good boy. Good boy. Alright, so we've got uh, a bunch of research completed because we're doing little small things. But we've got uh, Evocation 1, 2, and 3 completed. Uh, this basically, this gives us access to a couple of little evocations, but really we're doing this for two specific things. One being, the main one being arcane probing, which is super, I, I think, valuable for us in this particular instance. And magic duel, which could be useful for us later on. Um, and then we've also done thaumaturgy one. We're going to run up to thaumaturgy four, maybe five for soul slay, depending on what our, our plans are. Because soul slay is not a horrible idea in our situation um but yeah so we've done evocation one two and three and thaumaturgy one this turn got that notate there okay and then tomboy thursdays the bandar commander has claimed the throne of fire in the name of cute older women in your area in in the name of lanka right so so uh lanka Throw to fire this turn. Uh, we'll check that out. Notate that. Uh, actually, let's just go check that out right now. Uh, we've got the throne of fire right here. Uh, I don't know if we've seen this before, but uh, spreads dominion to you get three gems out of it. Um, spreads dominion two, so relatively low on the dominion spread. But blessed troops get attack skill plus three. That's really really nice if you have a lot of blessable troops which Lanka does very nice skill like the throne of fire I think is one of the nicer um, numero dos like tier two uh, thrones very very cool skill and it also gives you the adept of Piraflegaton, which is a fire three option if you don't already have fire the throne of fire is I think I think it's very valuable regardless, but if you don't have fire, it's even more valuable, right? I think this is a very good throne. Um, the attack skill plus three is, is really nice. Um, anyways, moving on. Uh, we have a couple of random little things here. We cast a Dark Knowledge, didn't find anything. Cast a Voice of Apsu, didn't find anything. Uh, sight searched in Golem range to find nothing. And we got nine Blood Slaves, so no no real like big boost to our gym income or anything like that we have a series of battles we have been counter raided or not counter raided we have been attacked in jibero um same scenario here just walking at us with the line of ref fights uh he did pull off some of his mages this time so there is that good to know uh, we got counter raided in Earth Sword Desert. So this is uh, the same Melkart that we've seen for a while. Let's see if he changes up his stuff. Blessing, Fire Shield, Protection from Fire. Nope. Uh, so he'll do easy. He'll he'll easily take that. Uh, we get to see Helheim fight some Independents in Norfangs. So this is just a little group of Ben here's. Interesting. Oh, they get they got waylaid by some or maybe they they're attacking some uh earth elementals, no big deal. Just clearing out some some issues from the throne of Gaia probably. Then we attacked in the Great Mountains. So just more raiding from our Bakamono show, and this actually has a fair amount of uh PD. So this could be a bit of an issue. Let's see what we got. Popped him. Yeah, we're definitely taking a couple of hits here or there, but I don't know how bad our losses are. Ooh, we lost three. Okay, so that's that's unfun attrition, but we did take it. Uh, and then we attacked in Bellfields with uh, Tokimochi and a small force of Oni. Uh, this is going to be probably nothing. We'll we'll lose wolves and then probably nothing else. Tokomochi flying into the back. Like, excuse me, sir. Easy peasy. Uh, and then we get counter-rated in Manace. 
So finally taking Manace back. Ah, this is where the other ones went. The uh, the other. Maybe they were concerned that I was going to run out of Jibero. So maybe they're just trying to close off the retreat. Or maybe they weren't concerned about that. Maybe they were just like, fuck it, we'll take multiple provinces at the same time. No need to send everything to Jibero. We've got this. Uh, and they are, in fact, correct when it comes to that. So uh, we'll check equipment real quick. Yeah, nothing, nothing crazy new. Um, and that's an easy victory for uh, Hinnom. So, as far as battles go for us, we have two wins and three losses versus Hinnom. That's... Uh, and then we got a bunch of unexpected events. We have an event in Tapanere, where we have a fertility festival. Growth plus two and income plus two. Very nice. Uh, locust swarms. Counter. Locust swarms in Llama. Uh, unrest 20 and minus 87 gold. <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, we have purged the heresy in the land of iron caverns, which is nice. Uh, we have a rebirth event in Kotal Swamp. Uh, we get some, uh, or we lose dominion in Ghent, gain some unrest. They have started to worship a false pretender. Oh no. Um, an experiment in the Arcane Labory Laboratory has gone awry. We have a Naminari that has been wounded. And in Zenthra, there are rumors of a hidden site of mystical power. A man claims to have seen a fountain of fire in his dreams. Actually, some fire gems were later found in the belly of a goat who strayed into the... That's a lot of fire gems in the belly of a goat. So, cool. Um, so that is it. We've got uh, gold minus 87. We don't like that. And fire plus 6. We do like that. So there's that. What else do we got? Uh, worldwide event, more Throne of Gaia stuff. Uh, we had a scout discovered in Arcos Safale. I probably should not have left that scout there. That is my bad. Uh, the fortification for Jibero has been breached, and our pyromancer from ages ago have, has finally died from disease. All right, what do we got going on? Um... Mostly maneuvering people around, as you are aware, moving people around for um, for the consolidation of Oni and site searching, etc., etc. But we do have a couple of little changes this time around, and we're going to talk about them. We're actually going to talk about uh, Hinnom first. Um, so, uh, over here in this territory, right, we, we now have two raiding forces west of Hinnom. Um, and we are now sneaking Kiyotomo from this eastern portion over towards the western portion as well. Potentially to link up with Tadashi's forces because uh, they've been both taking a little bit of attrition here or there. Uh, and it might be nice to have a slightly stronger force. So we're going we're gonna to try to book it that way. Um... Hinnom is currently taking back Jibero, which I'm hoping is going to stall them for a turn or two. But the big development over here, is, as you can see, is Lanka up here. And I think over here was not formerly Lanka. So, um, Lanka is moving to engage Hinnom. Basically, uh, taking, taking that tack that I talked about last turn, right? The concept of like, okay... Uh, Agartha's done. Hinnom is somewhat overextended here. Most of their forces have been arrayed now to deal with me. Um, so Lanka has a easy pass for sweeping into the side and, you know, taking the Agarthan lands. And then that is potentially going to weaken Hinnom, no longer having that income, both gym and actual gold-wise, right? Um, thus allowing me to strangle them with raiding and eventually overwhelm their big force, right? That's the, that's the general play there. Uh, so that is hopefully coming to fruition. Uh, we'll see over the next couple of turns how aggressive Lanka's engagement is and how successful they are with it. But I think, generally speaking, that um, it's it's a pretty safe assumption, right? Like, I do I do think that Hinnom is overextended on the Agarthan side. Most of what they 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 had a big army to beat Agartha with, 
And now that big army is mostly dedicated towards threatening me. And I think Lanka's going to have probably a pretty easy time of bowling over the Agarthan lands. But we'll have to see how that goes. Um, other big <laughs> news is you can see I'm attacking Pastena. Uh, and this is because Saramesha reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, Ubar's alpha strike against me went really well in their favor. And I'm not going to be able to resist them for very long. Uh, so you should probably attack my southern lands. Uh, now that being said, as far as like southern lands go, I, I really can only attack Pastena and like Golan Fins. Um, I could attack Pranda, but that is one of their current bases of operation. So they do not want me to attack that. Um, and honestly, I, I don't want to fight that, basically. So that is what it is. But that does mean, you know, basically the permission to take a fortification. Um, and it's, it you know, probably going to be a pretty, pretty good province for us. Uh, so we are moving in a force there this turn with Ophagion, um, who has just a, a couple of, you know, bandits and you know, militia. So that's going to take a while to actually siege that down. We are sending uh, a Terui over there to be able to potentially cap that throne, but also to take Golan Fins as well. Um, and in the meantime, we are semi-consolidating forces here in Mysia. Uh, we've been doing this a little bit over the last several turns anyways, but in Mysia, we now have uh, over 200 units. And I'm trying to consolidate all of all of the units in the surrounding territories. So in Lama, we've got a couple that we're bringing in. In White Forest, we've got a couple that we're bringing in. We still have a couple in Kotal Swamp, and that's fine. But I'm basically trying to make a a force in Iron Caverns, Missia, and Kotal Swamp that can be arrayed together relatively quickly. I think if we if we pull all of this stuff together, we're going to be sitting close to 400 units. Now, a lot of these units are very crappy units, right? The Ko-Onis aren't especially good. Um, they're okay if they're in turmoil, but they're not great, uh, period. The the ghouls, for example, are really shit units, truth be told. Um, not especially valuable, but they they can hit, they can wrap around people, or they can hit. They can hit hard, they can wrap around people, uh, the Oni mostly. And we're basically trying to figure out we're trying to consolidate power to be able to respond if if Hinnom starts to march into our heartland, right? Um, I still think that we have options that we can utilize against them, uh, but that is something that I want to be focused on. Now, otherwise, other other news, right? Other shit that we're doing. Uh, we're we're actually doing a few rituals this turn. Uh, we're doing a, another voice of Apsu, another dark knowledge we're doing five boom five arcane probings this turn because we completed the uh the run up evocation uh and that gets us access to arcane probing so we're gonna go ahead and just blitz out uh arcane probing across our territory at, kind of as quickly as we can um because if we get lucky we could go from Five astral pearls uh, per month up to something like 15 uh, 20 is extremely unlikely but being able to get up to like 10 to 15 could actually be a very useful boon uh, depending on how how well that goes right um, so we're gonna try to go ahead and do that so rituals this oh oh and we're also actually producing some reanimation so we've had we've had the access to do or we had the ability to do reanimation for a while but i haven't really felt the need to create that kind of chaff but we're starting to get this scenario of um we need patrol chaff in a number of locations right uh to deal with the unrest that gets generated by our onis uh, and having additional chaff just as like backline fodder or things like that can be useful. So uh, at least for right now, I'm going to start doing a little bit of reanimation here or there. 
Uh, this this reanimation in particular is probably going to just go up to Ghent and be patrol fodder for the blood hunting there. So not a big deal. Just just you know creating creating kind of infrastructure really is what that is. Uh, so one dark knowledge, one voice of Absu, one reanimation, and five arcane probing this turn. Go ahead and jot that down. Um, and then we are doing. As you've probably seen, quite a bit of forging this turn. So, again, it's kind of hard to track everything around all over the place. So I'm just going to read off the list and we'll discuss then why I'm picking what I'm picking. So, another Owl Quill, another Lightless Lantern. We already know why I'm doing those. Those are for research purposes. Uh, Dwarven Hammer, increasing our forging efficiency. We're doing a Horror, horror Helmet, uh, Armor of the Knights, and a Vine Shield. Let me notate that real quick. Um, so let's talk about those three things, right? So the horror helmet. Why are we making a horror helmet? Um, so horror helmet is... Right here. The horror helmet is a decent head protection. It's not the greatest in the world, but it's a decent head protection. No defense or encumbrance penalties. Uh, it is somewhat expensive, but we have a lot of death gems, so this is a, an expense that we can afford. And it gives fear plus five. So I wanted to talk about this, because this was actually something that I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, Dom5 wiki... So I'm, I'm just looking at the wiki real quick, right? Like, so reading from the wiki, a fear effect tempor temporarily lowers morale by its damage value to a maximum penalty of minus five. This penalty is halved every round, rounded towards zero. Additionally, it adds the hidden morale problems value of the unit and all units in the same squad. Fear effects come from a variety of sources, blah, 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 blah. Um, and the fear aura ability rapidly fires off invisible fear effects that target nearby squares, but cannot affect friendlies. Um, and to my understanding, I, I'm not going to read through absolutely everything to, to verify this, but to my understanding, what adding fear to your, uh, more fear. So, so here's the thing. Um, Dionys already have fear, right? They, they have fear built into them. Um, adding more fear to that, what that actually does is it increases the rate. Ooh, nice. You the bug. Um, it actually increases the range of that aura, uh, is my understanding. So, on one hand, the, the aura helmet is just a nice helmet, right? But we could use a dragon helmet instead, or we could use a horned helmet instead, right? Those are also nice helmets, right? But the fear effect is potentially something that is going to allow us to, if we get lucky against something like a big army of ref fights or something, if we take, uh, again, a look at this, we can see ref fights only actually have 14 base morale. Um, now that's going to be adjusted by the fact that they have, God, um, that's going to be adjusted by the fact that they have, um, you know, blessing, right? Et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of these things are very experienced. Holy shit. <laughs> My God. And they're in friendly dominion. But if you take away the concept, right? If they're not in friendly dominion, if they're in our dominion, that's going to go away, right? Why is this squad? Who the, who the fuck is leading them? Is it this guy? It's this guy. This guy has crazy leadership. He has valor. <laughs> nice. That is so good for him right here. Holy crap. Okay, right, so he has inspirational plus one. So he has a plus three. He has inspirational plus one. That is really freaking cool. Um, so these guys have, actually, now that I look at that, these guys have really high morale. So this is very unlikely to be valuable to us. Um, it was potential to be valuable to us in the past, right? Uh, with a scenario of, let, let's see it. 
where's another Mel cart that we can take a look at? We have, um, we got attacked here. Yeah, let's take a look at these Mel carts. So these guys still have a plus three. Jeez. Leadership to value. Never mind. Mel carts just have really great leadership. Huh. I did not realize that. I thought they were base leaders, so like a plus two leaders, but they're they're not. They're like they're amazing leaders. So plus three, they're always gonna have a plus three, meaning that ugh. you know, it's still it's still a possible thing to fire, so I'm not one hundred percent against this, right? Like fear can still be effective. I, I'm less sold on the idea of increasing our fear aura though. Uh, that being said, this is this turn has already happened, so the horror helmet remains. Uh, what else were we producing? Armor of Knights. I don't need to explain why we're doing Armor of Knights. Armor of Knights is awesome. Uh, it's It greatly boosts our base protection. We're very happy with that. And then uh, Vine Shield. Again, we talked about this last turn with the production of the Charcoal Shield, which is on Aterui right now. Um, but we're just looking to add in... You know, charcoal shields, vine shields, good total Volturnus, uh, probably some lead shields, things like that, just to have access to more shield options to throw them on people when we need particular shield effects, right? So uh, that's the reason why we're producing. Um, and that is pretty much it as far as stuff that's being done. Um, again... Things have been okay from an in uh, income standpoint here lately, uh, even even though we lost 87 gold this turn. Um, so we're able to, to recruit things like Naminaris and Onishugos here or there, um, continuing to... I say that, I guess maybe we had a bad turn this turn? Maybe that 87 gold really did hurt us, and that's why we have 290 sitting around. Hmm, that's strange. Uh, so, because we're recruiting a Naminari this turn... Uh, we are continuing to send gold to Ubar. Only a few more turns left of that. And we're we're aiming to go up Thaumaturgy 4. That should take us... We should finish 1... Or we should finish 2 and 3 this turn. We'll finish 4 the following turn. And then we're going to do a run up uh, enchantment. Probably, we might change this, but we're probably going to do a run-up enchantment to um, specifically enchantment 5 for Horde of Skeletons is the real goal that we're going for there. Um, but we get a bunch of other stuff along the way. Things like Twiceborn, right? Um, which is pretty expensive for us to put on Dionys, so I don't know that we are going to go that route, but it is a route that we can go. Um a Twiceborn is one of those situations of, in the past, it cost a flat amount, but now it costs a increasing amount for the size of the caster. Um, and Dionys are pretty thick. They're size 4, so cost 20 gems. I think it used to cost 10 or 15. Um, I don't remember, but it is now less practical to use on them. Um, so anyways... I think that's pretty much it for the turn. Uh, not a lot of action this turn. A couple of little things happening here or there, but mostly we're just getting prepped and ready uh, to potentially meet the big army from Hinnom, and we'll see how that goes. That's going to be it for the turn. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.